everybody. My name is Ray Baker, uh, wondersmith underscore Ray, and today I'm going to be talking about Maltigo. Uh, this is a companion piece to my recent blog, which is called uh, Beginner's Guide to Using Maltigo to Investigate Vessels and Sanctions. Uh, so the initial idea behind the blog was to um, take a company that I already knew some things about and knew what I might find and use a new transform that I hadn't used before and see what I could discover. So the first step is to have Maltigo. Uh, Maltigo Community Edition or Maltigo CE is available for free. You can go to their website uh, and download it and then all you have to do is put in, you know, create a password and that password can be used to log into Maltigo. So once you are logged in, uh, you will see these transforms. So transforms are how Maltigo works. Maltigo is basically to visualize data. Um, it puts it in a graph. And this can be data that you upload uh, through a CSV file or data that you are investigating by using these transforms that go out and pull data from these various um, sites and databases. So the transforms here can be free or pay. Um, they also sometimes uh, involve going to the actual website. So for instance, census might make you go to the website, sign up there, grab an API key and come back over and drop it in. It can be a bit uh, irritating sometimes to, to have to do all of this. Um, but overall, once you have them in, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and there are a lot of free ones that don't require any sort of work, like the standard transforms um, and some other free ones like a left. So if we type in a left, you can see the transform here. It is OCCRPLF, and if you're not familiar with this, it is a database of company registries and dumps and documents and sanctions data that is available and uh, used by journalists to kind of cross-reference their findings. So you can come here, you can click on install. I already have it installed, so that's why it, it doesn't show there, but you click install. You don't need to get an API key. It shows up right away. Um, so once you have Maltigo CE and you have installed the Aleph transform, you can click on the investigate tab at the top of Maltigo and you can click on this new tab. So this new tab will open up a graph. So this is basically your stage for your investigation. On the left side, you see an entity palette. So this is a list of entities and you can see there are tons of them uh, from people, companies, businesses, uh, CVEs, domain names, all these different entities. And what these are, uh, if you were to upload a CSV and you had different categories, uh, people, address, uh, IP associated, you would associate all of those with an entity within Multigo. So when you uh, import the data, it automatically creates a chart for you. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to investigate in Multigo. So we can go ahead and take this company, grab it, drop it on the graph. So I'm going to put it over here. Uh, it defaults as Paterva, but you can see it here. And if you rename it what you want to search, so I'm going to search the, what I did in my blog, which was Trans Petro Chart Co. Ltd. So this is a company I am familiar with. I know that they have sanctions. I know that they have uh, some corporate details that would be found in a left. So once you change the name, this is what will search in your transform, whatever you change this to. So now if you right click on this entity, it will open this transform palette here, you can see. If we go back, so all this is all transforms. These are all the ones I have installed, which is not too many because I just reinstalled Community Edition. So you see I have the standard transforms, I have hunter.io, little sis, and a left. These are all free transforms. So for this, we're going to use a left, and you can just click this 
play button and just automatically run all of them left. You can click this button and you can run all the transforms you have and it will go through each single one in your list. Um, we're going to click on a left and in here you can see you get some more options. You get again look up all the data in a left. You get look up specific data sets in a left and if you click on that you can see there are court archives, land registry, um, you can really narrow your search down. Um, I don't like to be that narrow. I'd rather go wide and, you know, kind of narrow it down over searches. So we're going to look up all data in a left and see what we get. So click on the little play button and there we go. Now we have some entities. Uh, we have some indictments, some vessels, some press releases. Kind of hard to see, so I'm going to click on the layout. Um, under layout, there are a few different layouts, <laughs> so you can click on the one that shows the data the way you want to see it. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with circle. And you can see that it has now laid out all of our data really nicely. So now we could run transforms on all of these entities to get more details. And that's basically what you do in Multigo. So you just keep investigating more and more until you find what you need. Um, I'm going to pick, let's see, SIG. So this vessel SIG, I'm going to right click on and I'm going to run all transforms. And we get some more details. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, so we get a sanction search and OFAC. We get some, uh, an SDN list listing, so they're on the uh, the SDN list. There's some sanctioned entities uh, data. So the the cool thing about this is if you click on the SDN list thing here, it shows the original source on the right under this detailed view. So you can then follow these um, original source links and the LF link to get more details. <clears throat> and oftentimes when you when you go to these links, you can get uh, detailed information about the sanction, the indictment, the associated companies. Um, I'm going to, let's pick another one here. And let's see what we get from this so frocked indictment. I'm just gonna run all transforms again. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go back so this is all transforms. So this is every transform that I have um, installed. Now you can see the Wayback Machine is showing up. So we get some different details depending, or different transforms depending on which entity we're clicking on. Uh, so we'll just run all transforms. I don't know what that was for, but <clears throat> so that brings us. Oh, I got really big fast. Okay, so we got a lot of details about the indictment. It looks like a bunch of pages. We get a Wayback Machine uh, article. A few Wayback. So most of these are Wayback Machine or, or pages. Um, so you can see, you're just going to follow this pattern of like investigating, using transform different transforms to investigate each of these entities. Um, until you have kind of enumerated all of the selectors that you want to find or you've uh, figured out what you need to figure out. Um, and again, you can change your view um, however makes sense to your case. I find that a little hard to look at. Um, so if you were to click on this SDN original link and follow it, or the indictment, or um, any of the sanctioned documents, you would find details about these companies. Um, the Transpetro chart company, and there's another one, so frocked. And uh, they're connected, they're connected, they're sanctioned, um, and the reason they're sanctioned is for uh, these vessels, well, it's for a, a plot to transport 
uh, jet fuel to Syria, illegally, obviously. Um, and they used these vessels. So the SIG, the Yaz, the Passat, uh, OT-2077, Sudak. Um, all these vessels were uh, sanctioned along with the entities that were behind it. So now if you look through those SDN lists and those sanctions, you would find the ship names, but you would also find the IMO number. And the IMO number works like a VIN number in a car. So a VIN number does not change, right? It goes with your car. An IMO number for a ship works the same way. So a ship also has a MIMZ number, an MMSI number, which works as a license plate. So just like you can change the license plate number on your car, people can change the license plate number on their ship. So that's the MIMSY number. You can also change the name of a ship. What you can't or supposedly cannot change is the IMO number. So when you are going further in your investigation and you want to take it outside of Multigo, or maybe there's a social media transform or something um, like that, you would want those IMO numbers because when you go to, to Twitter, which is a place that I like to look for ships because there are tons of analysts who do this similar work. And when they post ships, they post the name and they post the IMO number. So knowing now from this sanctions list, what the Yaz and the SIG, what their IMO numbers are along with their names, we can go to Twitter or Google and we can look them up. And when we look them up, we would see that the Yaz and the Sig are still making the same journey down to Syria uh, that they were when they were sanctioned. Uh, they do it monthly or every two months. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing, but they're doing the same journey. So you can see how you can pivot from things like the Wayback Machine and these vessels and these sanction lists to more and more and more details, um, kind of building your case. And then Maltigo works as a great way to visualize that when you're trying to share this with someone else. Um, and you can cooperatively work on a document like this with a team. So that is my video. If you wanted a more uh, beginner look at Maltigo, I do have another blog that uh, talks about how to set up Maltigo and run a basic search. Um, I think I'm going to make a video on that. I'm also going to make a video on uh, uploading a CSV to Maltigo and using that to create a visualization. Um, so if you like this video, if you like the content, like and subscribe, please. Um, that is my video and I hope you will come back and deep dive into OSINT with me.